Okay, I am DJ Andy Smith, uh, DJ obviously, a compiler of uh, compilation albums, uh, big music fan, collector of vinyl, and um, yeah, just love music. Andy's my best mate, uh, and my name's Nick Hawks. I am an artist manager, but I'm also a, a, I'm, I'm a passionate music fan, uh, and I'm lucky enough to um, run Reach Up with Andy um, and you know be involved in DJing and putting those nights on and having uh, great times around the globe with my best mate. <laughs> That's what it's all about. It's, we're very lucky. We're yeah. very lucky. Uh, yeah, well, it was an extension of the first one. Obviously, it uh, came out uh, a couple of years ago, the Reach Up Volume 1. And it was uh, the same kind of ethos as the first one, really, to find some original tracks that I liked, mixed with some new versions, some re-edited versions of old tracks, to, to give it the scope of the, the original uh, music with a new spin on it as well, really. So there's a... Uh, there's a, well, there's a new, new track by Nick on there. That's right. Re edit by myself. It's right here. Uh, Re edit by Chrissy Kaibosch. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, just to mix the, the new with the old, really, and a uh, cohesive uh, collection together, I think. Yeah, well, I believe we met in the school year, although I'm not sure what, exactly which year, but it was the school year the, of 76 to 77. I was the new kid in new town. Kid, yeah, you new kid in town in the primary school. And we'd have been, what age were we then? Uh. Ten. Ten. Ten-ish, I think. <laughs> there was a pivotal point, I think, when on Saturday night we would have to decide whether we were going to watch Match of the Day or listen to Al Matthews' uh, disco baiting show on Radio 1. I think that was the pivotal <laughs> point. And we'd come in Do school on Monday, so what did you do? Watch Match of the Day? Or did... and, and, and the mad thing is, we could have taped... We could have taped our Matthews, but yeah. we, we never did. We couldn't have taped Match of the Day at that time. No, no That no, wasn't we, something no. that was available <laughs> that's to true, us. That's true. Um, but yeah, that's right. So exactly, we, 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 that was probably the first radio station, sorry, the first show, wasn't it, that we discovered playing yes. a cool black American music of, of the, the, the late 70s. And actually. Um, and uh, yeah, so for example. And we, actually, this, this was uh, one of the first things I ever heard. Right, exactly. So that was and the an, first club in Devon Hall. Right, so that's right. We both heard that on, on Al Matthews, which is Edgar Winter above and beyond. Yeah, and um, and then <laughs> that's right. And then and then I, you'd have gone out and bought that off the back here and it on the radio, right? Bought that in Virgin Records in the Broadmead Centre of uh, Bristol, in Bristol for one pound ninety nine. We had a radio station in Bristol called Radio West. There was a guy called Ray Edwards mm. who literally had a. a a, a, a soul funk mm. show uh, virtually every night of the week. <laughs> well, he seemed, certainly seemed <laughs> to get quite a few bits. And funnily enough, this too, this is one of the bits of vinyl I brought along today. New Jersey Connection, Love Don't Come Easy. Which is on here. Which is on there. <laughs> and I remember this being a, a Ray Edwards spin. On, yes, uh, oh, on, definitely. Do you remember that? On oh, Radio, definitely. Yeah, yeah, on Radio West. And then I also remember it as a... Where did we hear this at club that club at the top of Park Street in Bristol Princess Court I Princess think. Court I remember going out and we you know so this is 1982 so we're 15 when this record came out yeah. and that, so we probably bumped into Princess Court at about like maybe 16 years yeah. old I, I mean Princess Court was just around the, the corner from the legendary dugout club where mm. the Wild Bunch used to play mm. we used to I mean there were so many clubs in those days mm. we did go to the dugout a couple of times we did I remember yeah, I we, don't know if the Wild Bunch were playing when we were there it might have been also around this time we were we were, had our mobile disco thing going didn't we we did the disconnection so we started that maybe when we were t- well, well, I believe the first gig we ever did uh, was my sister's birthday party mm. in, in our house when uh, my sister's 16, so we must have been 14. Okay. Uh, so we didn't have a set of proper decks, though. <laughs> was that when we used the... That's when we used two what? hi-fis. Yeah, so my like hi-fi. The, the one, the, like, the and, horizontal And my mum's hi-fi from downstairs. Yeah, right. And then we kind of built them up so they were roughly the same level. Yeah. Uh, no mixer. Yeah, <laughs> we were just on the volume control, sat next to each other. Which and that and that was that was the model for for us as a mobile disco traveling around and playing other people's party was the, the yeah. horizontal hi fi I think it was from your house and the sort of vertical one from mine, four speakers and like you said, yeah. no mixer. So we'd have a, a hi fi each, wouldn't we? Speakers and, next to each other. Yeah, so and, just go and it literally you. I'll be like you. Fade yeah, that up, I'm yeah. going to fade them. I'm fading down now. Fade down, okay. I'm going to fade, fade it up, fade it up. It was that, wasn't it? I mean, of course, the love of vinyl, I guess, 
evolved and developed. So, you know, we're out on a Saturday afternoon, we're buying 12 inch singles in, in and Bristol. They were cheap. You yeah. Know, a lot yeah. of these records, you know, because they didn't chart. In, 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 you know, because you could buy, let's not forget, you could buy records in W. H. Smith, Debenhams, Boots, everywhere. Uh, this is actually HMV, but you yeah. know, if it didn't chart, then they just chuck it out cheap. So we'd be buying all these great tunes really cheap. And another great funny thing as well is, mm. like, I think we were the only two kids in our whole second, by the time we moved to secondary school, that were into this kind of music. Well, all our friends right. were it, into, uh, like, heavy metal. Yeah. You know? So so sometimes, or maybe, like, two-tone, I guess, which is cool. Mm. So sometimes we'd meet them on the bus, we'll be on the way home, and they'd be like, what records you got? What records you got? You know, I've just got the new Motorhead album. And we'd be like, oh, I don't know, we've got the, I don't know, it's this cheap thing, I don't know, you know. Just, I don't, I don't know just what thought it is. give it a just go. Just thought give it a go. Yeah, cheap. Well, we actually knew we this like, is yeah. a wicked cheap. <laughs> Well, I couldn't tell anybody because because it wasn't nobody was into no, it. No, no. You know, the idea of listening to a DJ mixing records together was pretty alien to us. You couldn't really, and there's nobody listening to anybody mixing records together, really, was there in those days? I mean, I mean, our introduction to it was probably uh, Tony Prince on Radio Luxembourg. Yes. When he'd have um, Alan Coulthard. Doing like a little kind of mega mix type of thing. Shalimar and yes, that's Jackson right, and all that kind of stuff. That was the first time we'd actually heard records mixed together. And I've got to say, actually, as a brief aside, you know, the way that you know, in the same way that now we've got a bit of a rapport with Tony Liu made the Reach Up record. It was lovely to do this Trailblazers podcast, as you know, it had Tony Prince on that show, yeah, and was able to talk to him, interview him about his journey in music and mm. then and, and and that was kind of cool as well you know mm, yeah. I remember but yeah you're right so that's right so Alan Coulthard used to do a mix thing and then, and then this you brought along and then, this, yeah, I mean, the, the early example so of this was what used to be called a mixer wasn't it a yeah, mixer record really which cool, was yeah. Uh, a kind of the pre- predated the the stars on forty five, which was the cheesier version of it. That's right. But it was basically a record with twelve minutes long of lots of tunes segway together, small segments yeah. of different records. But obviously, really good quality. I mean, yeah. when we were in Luxembourg, when you know the Shalimar mix was going in and out. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, we well, did that, still record it. Well, that's right. This was something that we re-edited for, for the, the first, first reach up. Comp. Comp, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, Jimmy Ross, first true love affair. Big tune for us, and then you'd have you'd have bought that originally back in the in the day, yeah. also. Yeah, and then it ended up on the first comp. So that's yeah. kind of cool. What have we got here? That's it's another. Uh, yeah, that's another mix. And we went. I think we went to Yate on a school trip. <laughs> There's a lot of these times we went on school trips and we ended up bunking off and buying records. Mm. And, and I bought this album, which is an album called Winners. I think it was 75p in uh, yeah. Menzies or something. Yeah. And one side is is another segwayed. Uh, side where everything's mixed together so that wasn't like an early kind of mix influence as well Greg Henderson Dreaming so this is a a, 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 yeah yeah so this was another sort of big tune specialist radio I think Um, and, and you know again we were we weren't you know old enough necessarily to be hearing this record in in clubs um, so, yeah. but we loved it more from from radio. Right? I mean, there was more radio going on then because uh, there was a radio station in Gloucester called Seven Sound. Yep, that was really really hard to get. But I used to have an aerial that I literally used to run all the way around the side of my house, which meant I could get Seven Sound only in mono. You couldn't get stereo; it was too much interference. Uh, but there were DJs on there like um, Roger, Jim, Jerry Hipkiss, yeah, Roger, Roger Tavell, Steve Aspie. And, and they'd be playing tunes like this and I'd get a nice quality recording better than Radio Luxembourg yeah. uh, so then you just walk around with that C90 all week and, and just get into these tunes and this this was actually on the very first Street Sounds album as well oh, the Street right. Sounds compilations which would get you know, import tracks from America and put them out cheap which was handy in those days when you didn't have a job yeah. and uh, this was on the very first Street Sounds compilation as well it's on here on the album uh, New Jersey Connections on there um, yeah, it's other bits and pieces. There's some exclusive stuff on here. So the Night of My Life uh, track, which is Full Intention and Nick Reach Up, which is myself featuring Jazz Morley. So yeah. that's kind of something that I made with uh, Full Intention guys, and yeah, it came the, out on Midnight Riot. Yeah. So that's got its little place on there. Yes, um, the re-edit that I did of Will Sessions, so with Amp Fiddler, uh, Lost Without You, which was... Uh, 
disco track of the month in Mixed Mag in January, yeah. which is Bravo, nice. yes. Bravo. So that, thanks to Yamu. Right. That was that was cool. Uh, that's a cool thing. Um, other bits and pieces on here that are uh, interesting. So there's a serious intention you don't know is on here. So that obviously came out on Easy Street, where I've got a history there because I worked at a radio station called WBLS in New York. Um, kind of between my second and third year of uni and then when I came I got to meet the Easy Street guy records guys while I was there and then in my third year of uni I was like their UK rep you might remember Mm -hmm. kind of touting their stuff around trying to get um, UK record labels to pick up stuff on Easy Street Serious Intention you don't know an Easy Street classic and then so hence I kind of reached out to them and um, then Chrissy Kibosh who we've mentioned before remixed that um, so it yeah. kind of gives a gives a fresh spin on yeah. on, on, on something on a classic from a label that I first encountered many years ago and, and worked for and the, uh, there's actually something we could we could talk about here as well in the fact that uh, so we mentioned that we were friends like in the late 70s and went to school ended up you know finishing school in about 84 uh, and, mm. and, and then we kind of split up a bit and you went off and like, did the WBLS thing and worked in London. Yep. I stayed in Portishead, yep. met Jeff Barrow from the band Portishead, worked with them, supplied samples for Portishead, went on yeah. tour with Portishead, yeah. did all that stuff, did the document, lots of more compilations. Early 90s, I was already, yeah. you know, doing a lot of stuff in the rave zone and yeah. have you know have had the kicks like a mule hit that yeah. I made with Richard and yeah. signed all of this stuff and that was going great and I think at that point though you were probably you well you were definitely you had a regular job oh yeah point, well, I used to work in an office yeah we are, DJ once a month yeah with Paul Morrissey so our lives yeah. had gone very different but then all of that stuff that you just started mentioning about you and Jeff who we went to school with and then the whole Porter's head thing Late blew up and then 90s. suddenly you were a uh, Globe trotting international DJ, and you'd moved to London, and then that, funnily enough, then our then we reconnected, yeah, then didn't we? Because London. we were we were kind of doing comparable stuff again. So it was an interesting thing, like about the journey. So reach up to me is us representing the music that we love, that we grew up on, and we're still passionate about disco, boogie, and also early fusing house. it, fusing it with the the kind of current crop of re-edits and yes. disco house stuff as well, because we we love that as well. We kind of love the way that, that it's evolved into that as well. So we try and cover everything. Yeah, and so we had a bit of a, you know a bit of a journey until we landed on the name Reach Up, and then this I think the this, very first reach this up was the very first Reach Up. The gramophone. Club. At the Gramophone Club, uh, host Andy Smith. It says we're guests on rotation. I'm, 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 I'm seem to be a guest here rather than a. <laughs> Sorry. All right, okay. Um, you move you know, the ranks. We're guests right. on, on rotation. Dave Ball, Soft Cell, Smooth, Smooth and Terrell, Keith Lawrence, Paul Morrissey, Gordon Matt. So that was the, yeah, that was really the first proper yeah. reach up. And then uh, it grew. Uh, we got Chrissy Kibosh on, on board. Um, working with us, grew some more, and then we started doing, you know, Stoke, these, Newington. Stoke Newington. You know, had Plastician along there, um, had did some bussy building stuff, Smooth and Terrell there, and then it just then we started rolling, didn't we? Then we got the residency at the bussy building, and that's where we are now. And I think in terms of the best gigs that we've ever done together. Um, for me, I, let's think festival-wise, Blue Dot, Blue Dot because you know I love the fact that we were we played after Uncle, Uncle uh, in in the kind of you know closed off, the closed off one of the really big arena at Blue Dot. So I really enjoyed that one. I enjoyed when we went to Portugal. Um, oh yeah, uh, last, that last summer. Yeah, yeah, last summer we played in Lisbon. And that was that was a number great. six festival was a good because we had like festival number six six seven hour takeover yes that was, that was great which is similar that. to actually festival when we also programmed the night that was also a very good one yes when we had plastician and shadow child and we, we had about eight hours to ru- running the festival thing so all of these have been great gigs but yeah but equally um, you know got to say just like did the bus building, building sessions man. It's always great, isn't it? Yeah. Always great. That club, South London Soul Train, at the Bussy Building in Peckham, is, is, is you know, an incredible... If uh, you're into soul, funk, disco, 
yeah. and you know, 50s stuff. Yeah. It's just, there's no, there can't be anywhere better. No, it, it's really tremendous. It's really something, four rooms of music, mm. you know, um, often really busy, great, vibrant, and we can, you know, it, we can play, we can go where we want, can't we? So yeah. we can play kind of more commercially accessible disco records, which we do. Which we like to do. So yeah, we've got no problem dropping and Earth, Wind and & Fire and Sheet, because these are great records in our yeah. opinion. But also we can go deep and underground. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and so, so, you know, we've been... We've been blessed. I think last year, did, how many, was it 23 gigs we did last year? 26, I think. Is it? 23, 26, 26 <laughs> something like that. And um, just to be able to, to do that amount of reach up dates is mind blowing. Phenomenal. It's mind blowing. So, so it's hard to identify any one gig, isn't it, really? Mm, yeah, yeah. Because we got, because there's so many, so many great ones. We're lucky. <laughs> All right, so thank you for listening to some of our. Uh, Musings and meanderings and stories picked up over decades in uh, in the in the the zone of, of loving and living this music <laughs> and uh, yeah uh, the album is out now so uh, as is volume one is as is volume one <laughs> hope you like it hope you like it.